Hello, 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 and welcome to another fantastic episode of NRK Among Friends Roundtable Discussion. Before we get started, let me first remind you that we are covered by the BIPCOT No Government License, which allows for the use and reuse of this podcast by anyone and everyone except for governments and the bludgies thereof. You can learn more about that at BIPCOT.org. That is B-I-P-C-O-T dot O-R-G. We're also protected by Brandenburg v. Ohio, 1969 which ruled that the government cannot punish inflammatory speech unless that speech is, quote, directed to inciting or producing an imminent lawless action and is likely to incite or produce such action. Therefore, everything said here on Anarchy Among Friends Roundtable Discussion is entirely hypothetical. This allegedly. Is episode, allegedly, in Minecraft. <laughs> well, not only that, but nobody really listens to us anyway, so it can't be yeah, likely to produce such like action. <laughs> yeah, not like That's not true. That's that. not true. Um... Uh, shout out to Liberty Minded Medics. Ooh. They uh, they listen to the podcast. They hit me up on Twitter a few times, um, and I'm actually going to record with them after Christmas. They're, they they said they're going to borrow our format. <laughs> 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 so, so those of you that listen to both shows, we're sorry in advance. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the, oh, how, uh, <clears throat> on episode 118, and people are like. Still listening, like the last episode two weeks ago, two hundred over two hundred listens, which Jeez. is decent for us. So yeah, there's two hundred well, really bored people in this world. Or yeah. there's, there's, say, there's like the re, there's the like hundred and seventy five podcast bots that are just giving us numbers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we or, the, all or there's people. one person that's a friend of ours who's like driving cross country. It just yeah. keeps well, just keep know listening to it. I know that there's actually a couple, right? We all know like a couple of truckers who like when they have nothing oh, yeah. better to Keith, do. Keith and Brett, they both listen to yeah. the yeah, Yep. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. use they use this as torture at Gitmo, so <laughs> <laughs> just locked in a concrete room with strobe lights and us. <laughs> <laughs> and occasionally they turn the water on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me mispronouncing words and you guys just corrected me. That's the entire <laughs> that's the entire audio track. <laughs> me fucking snorting over and over again. <laughs> Talking about that picture they'll never see. Mm. <laughs> I don't even know what the picture is. It is so like this stuff. <clears throat> the picture's not that big a deal. All these guys have seen it. It's it's not that big a deal. It's just a fucking Halloween costume. Back when I had a she, rockin' body. I was going to say that she, if she could still fit into most of those clothes, she would wear again. Yeah. Yeah. She was in, the Navy, in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Rockin' hot bot on the beach. We'll just leave it at that. Yeah. If, if I could still fit into those clothes, I'd wear them. So. Yeah. <laughs> I could still fit into the shoes. <laughs> the boots. <laughs> It's a step not, in the right direction. Just not that tiny little uh, red vinyl step. dress. <laughs> <laughs> you barely fit in that, barely fit in that dress back then. Yeah, I oh, know. I there wasn't a whole lot made to it, it to fit into, though. I mean, yeah, I, know. I saw at a Halloween once. I saw a girl who was well endowed who decided to wear this like skin tight orange like outfit, and then it had like black netting on the outside of it. That she was definitely way too buxom to be wearing, so it seriously looked like a bag of oranges. It was <laughs> not flattering at all. Jeez. <laughs> Speaking of, let's let's get into let's just let's transition. Um, speak. How do of, we transition from a bag of oranges to anything on this list? Perverting, well-meaning things is kind <laughs> of what we do. That's yeah. Weird. All right, so we're gonna go to go. We're gonna talk. We're gonna go from Dirica. Orange. We're gonna go from yeah. Dirica mm -hmm. to she's my cherry pie mm -hmm. to the <laughs> FDA deregulating cherry pies. Yeah, hell yeah. We're on fruit. The topic is fruit. <laughs> Finally, a victory for for the real issues here. <laughs> yeah. Now, well, it's okay. It's it's one of two real issues that that the government just. I'm so happy they tackled. Right. I mean, we got. Yeah. We got crippling debt and and multi trillion dollar a year deficits and uh, and militarized police and and over a thousand people have been killed by police already this year mm -hmm. and there's still you know a couple weeks to go. 
We're sliding right, yeah. into a dystopian nightmare at a faster right? yeah. and faster and, and rate this, every fucking day. And and all this, all this like just incredible shit is going on right now. And we have the government like really pressing the issue, and they've deregulated the amount of water that can go through a shower head in an hour. Mm-hmm. And they've deregulated the number of cherries that can go into a frozen cherry pie. Well, I don't know about you guys, but that gives me hope. <laughs> right? It's just like, uh, I feel like they things also are getting deregula- better. Yeah. Didn't they okay. also deregulate dishwashers? Yeah, they did that. No, recently. no, no. They, d- they didn't deregulate oh, no. dishwashers. They increased the amount of water that a dishwasher okay. is allowed to use per cycle. Oh. And less regulated. So Not no right, home yes. improvement. So no like so, yeah. Ken Allen home improvement level dishwasher here. No, yeah. it's not. It's not like no. It, it went from like two point three gallons in uh, per cycle to uh, up to like five point seven or something like that. I feel like I remember that episode of Home Improvement when he fucked so with it's their like, dishwasher. It's it's literally like it like <laughs> blew the back like of it out. The plate size. goes across the living room. <laughs> <All right>. So <laughs> the show was fucking great. <laughs> So, all right, uh, this, this is an article from Reason. It says, what a frozen cherry pie says about FDA regulatory foot dragging. It took 15 years for the agency to decide that consumers didn't actually need to be protected from the threat of substandard fruit desserts. <laughs> they, you know, I, for one, find the idea of a substandard fruit dessert very alarming. And <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm right. offended. And I'm not sure I would be able to stop myself from buying a brand that had disappointed me. Yeah. I feel yeah. like I feel like I'm not capable of like trying different brands and finding the one that has the best fruit to pie crust ratio and, you know, sticking with that brand, giving them my money because I like the way they do it best. Yeah, I don't think I'm capable that- of that. Do you remember that scene in Casino with the the blueberry muffins, where he he yeah, bites into the number his blueberry of, muffin? The number of blueberries. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and he's like, "What? Look at this! Mine's falling apart, and yours hardly has any. Like, what? The same amount of blueberries? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking right. of right now. All right, <laughs> um, American cherry pie manufacturers may soon be able to decide for themselves how many cherries their frozen pies should have, free of burdensome federal regulations. Former drug and, or former food, yeah. Former food and drug administration head Scott Gottlieb tweeted out praise that his former staff has successfully arranged to deregulate the contents of cherry pies after no kidding two years of hard work, and he's actually understating it. Hard two work. Years. Your fucking tax dollars at work. It, it, it takes fucking them. two years. Hold two on. Years. Hold on. As always. It gets better. Oh. Yes. Uh, so this is now federal pie anarchy? No. Unfortunately. In 1971, <sighs> the FDA established regulations imposing particular standards for frozen cherry pies. The lengthy regulations determined not just how many or how much of the pie must be made of cherries, 25% by weight, and how many of the cherries may be, quote, blemished, or have scabs, or be of less than stellar quality, under fifteen percent. Even though the pies are greatly placed, or are a great place to put, you know, blemished fruit. I was gonna say, isn't that literally what you do with blemished fruit? Is you put it in a pie so no one notices? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but it also established complicated rules for determining compliance. So this nineteen seventy one, the FDA took took it upon themselves to regulate the amount per weight that a pie must have regarding cherries and the amount of cherries that may be quote blemished that sounds like a fucking jobs program to me i don't think it's anything other than a fucking jobs program like i can you imagine being the person who has that job where you are you're like the the cherry pie czar actually i totally (laughs) can i can totally imagine being that person like, that sounds fucking I just, awesome. I was just say, I, I want, want that job. I want to know how much the <laughs> cherry industry spent that year on lobbying. Yeah, like the, yeah. The, we got to <laughs> stop this aggressive cherry pie lobbying. I mean, are are the the, the cherry lobbyists and the apple lobbyists like meeting in the back, 
trying to gang they, up. To, they and have to they, team up to compete against the cranberry lobbyist. I mean, that guy's putting all the, his juices in everyone else's juices. And oh, did yeah. they did they hire Warrant to produce fucking propaganda for them with that song? Yeah. <laughs> and wasn't it much? If the, if the restriction was twenty five percent by weight, by weight, and I have to ask if you remember. Was it this past spring? I think it was. We were t- did a story about Michigan cherry growers and how they were dumping extra excess crops when not, all of not, that stuff okay, could have been on, making okay, it into our damn food. They weren't dumping excess cr- excess crops. What they were dumping was above the legal limit that they're allowed to grow and sell on the market, right? And so this excess. This, <laughs> and and this is well, it. Te- okay, all right. Te- <laughs> it wasn't. Yeah. That's, that's Thank you, Eric. Yeah. The the, F- <laughs> the FDA the FDA regulates the amount of a given product. That's allowed to be sold on the market in order to keep the market <coughs> artificially inflated in price. Don't, right. Don't so keep, anything anything above that level has to be discarded. It isn't De Beers not allowed to do business in the United States because that's what they do with the diamond industry? Because they're a cartel. Oh no, I just know about cherries. I'm just saying, like that's that's <laughs> literally why that's literally why De Beers had to pull out of the United States is because. They run the diamond industry as a cartel, and and they have this giant vault in Antwerp that holds on to most of the diamonds. They only release so many. And there's because a class action practice, lawsuit. Yeah, dude, yeah. there was a class action lawsuit about that. We got a fucking check in the mail, even though we never signed up for it, right? So we got a check in the mail for like the difference on my fucking engagement ring. It was like a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, that's why you don't see De Beers stores anymore is because they were kicked out of the U.S. They can't do business here anymore because they do that. And that is literally what the FDA does in all food industries yeah. every day. Well, it's okay if they do it. It's not okay if somebody <laughs> else does it. Yeah. You don't um, remember, Andrew. It's the government. It's rules for thee and not well, for me. Right. When the president does it, it's not illegal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> While the FDA has been granted the power by Congress to regulate frozen foods and fruits, including pies, it is very important to explain that these regulations were only implemented for cherry pies. There are nice. other similar ah, regulations aha, ah. for other – There no, there are no other similar regulations for other types of fruit pies. And there are no so similar we, we regulations – there are no similar regulations for fruit pies to control the number – or quality of the cherries in them, just frozen pies and only the cherry ones. And yet, so can clear answer here. And yet, apple pies haven't yeah. fucking gone down the toilet. Which means, which means that clearly this is the result of lobbying by the frozen apple pie industry. Yeah. To defeat competition. <laughs> right. I was gonna say it's more likely it's a. a more of a cartel like a like scenario with the cranberry growers, the apple growers, the orange grower, you know, all oh, these other fruit know. growers yeah. and that's what that's yeah. what it is. It's it it was it's the it's the pumpkin mafia. They were upset <laughs> that the cherries were shining bright. Yeah. And they're like, "No, we need to knock them down a bit." You know, yeah. all I can think all I can think is like that there's like the some dude from Ocean Spray sitting in this giant chair in front of this huge picture window, turning around to this big table with all these guys on it. He's got and, like a white cat in his lap and he's heading it yeah. and talking to everybody. Gentlemen. It's a hairless cat. Get it right. <laughs> it's just... oh, okay. Uh, and so under Gottlieb and by the request of the American Bakers Association a trade association and lobbying organization, the FDA <coughs> began rethinking the rule. The ABA urged or argued that consumers, not the federal government, should decide whether they want to shell out more money for pies with more fruit in them or spread less or spend less money on lower quality pies, if that's right. all that they can afford. Or maybe some people like pies that have less filling. Like I mean, that's more like a McDonald's fucking apple pie, anyway. Yeah. I mean, everybody has monsters. different. I mean, yeah, everybody has different right? preferences. Yep. You know. Uh, ultimately, the FDA agreed with the ABA because they note the proposed rule change. There had been no push to regulate any other similar types of fruit pies. So this goes. Remember, this goes all the way back to 1971. What the fuck you was going what? on? 
So this is this is seventy one. I'll bet you money this is why McDonald's doesn't have a fucking cherry pie and they only have apple pies. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh. probably. So nineteen oh, seventy. Yeah. So this is this is forty nine years of cherry pie regulation finally Jeez. broken. The end of an era. Cherry pie oppression. Yeah. Okay. Here's a a, a quote from the FDA. Quote from the FDA, uh, quote, we are not aware of any evidence suggesting that consumers have different expectations for unbaked, for unbaked frozen cherry pies or other cherry pies. At the same time, no other cherry pies are subject to a standard of identity or a standard of quality. And we are aware of no evidence in, no evidence indicating that such standards are necessary to promote honesty and fair dealing in the interest of consumers or to ensure that those cherry pies meet consumer expectations. What, did they so, expect somebody so, to like open a box with a frozen cherry pie and be like, "Wait a minute, there's four cherries too many. I can't eat this." <laughs> Sim- similarly, other fruit pies are not subject to standards of identity or quality, and we are aware of no evidence indicating that such standards are necessary to promote honest and fair dealings in the interest of consumers or to ensure that pies meet consumer expectations. Because as we all know, if you don't <laughs> control those pie men, those pie makers, they will cheat you. That, yeah, yeah. Slimy yeah. little bastards. So pretty soon you'll, you'll, you'll have set a people... maximum, not a minimum. Yeah, pretty It'll soon. It'll be anarchy. Have... <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'll have people selling pies out of vans, and you'll have people's abuelas putting them for sale on Facebook, and it'll just be anarchy. Like that sounds like utopia to me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, Hold can on. We it... Do that? <laughs> it gets better. Tamales and fucking black market cherry pies. Black what market. else do you fucking need? It, 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 hold on, it gets better. It gets better, right? The agency also notes that the regulations forbid the use of artificial sweeteners in unbaked frozen cherry pies, and that those pies and no other types of pies, including unfrozen cherry pies. So the feds are forbidding bakers from creating low sugar options, even if that's what consumers are asking for. No cherry pies for you, diabetic. None. Yeah. None. Nope. And if yeah. you do, if you nope. do want a cherry pie, you either have to make it yourself, or you have to buy a, an unfrozen option. And yep. you know, I just want to like again, like all I can think of is that these people like honestly have to believe at some in some way that somehow there are these unscrupulous back alley cherry pie bakers <laughs> that were creating these 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 unbaked frozen cherry pies that were just way out of standard and people were going what the hell? I don't know I don't <laughs> think no I think just some fucking bureaucrat got disappointed one time and got the fucking one pissed cherry... off <laughs> yeah that's the he most likely diner, scenario it totally it. is yeah. the most likely yeah. scenario the, the, there was an FDA guy who bought a frozen unbaked cherry pie from his local grocer and he took it to the office Christmas party or something. And everybody was like, and I was like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> yeah. This sucks. All right. Okay. All right. Like, and then <laughs> somebody's like, hey, Stan, did you want some cherry pie? And he stares off into the distance and the PTS. <laughs> <flat back>. <laughs> all right. I got, I got one, one more sentence. One more sentence. And this is, this is the icing on this. Or this is the, uh, the extra cherry in this cherry pie. The cherry Pop on it, Jason. Top cherry on top of the cherry cherry. whatever oh god pop that cherry the fda study notes that there are currently only 40 distinct cherry pies produced by 20 different companies so this regulation in place since 1971 literally only affects 40 pies produced by 20 companies (coughs) well that's totally the greater good I mean that's that's obviously a very that proper use of their fucking power. I was gonna say that sounds like something that only government could deem necessary to do. Yeah, I am I am impressed actually that they didn't spend even more resources on regulating the remainder of the pies, and it was probably only due to anti regulation lobbying by the fruit pie industry that prevented further overstep from them. Because you would think that they would have been like, well, we've already regulated cherry pies. So what else we got? We got apple. We got we got pear. We got peach. We have pecan. We <laughs> they just berry start- like oh. blackberry, boysenberry yeah. pie. Yeah. yeah. You, and then and then you know they could move on into crumbles. And yeah. you know and where is, does it end? Is a crumble yeah. a pie? 
Don't get me on that debate, man. You don't you don't want to go down that road. No, the, it's, I'm, Trump, saying, I'm sure. I'm fritters, sure. One of the two. I'm, I'm betting money. There's an FDA regulation that defines. Is, mm-hmm. Well, I mean, they they do that with liquor. They do that with the alcohol industry, where like bourbon can only be produced in certain specific ways and has to be aged x amount of time and stuff to be bourbon or if it wants to be called whiskey it needs to do this and be made from this and blah they already do stuff like that so yeah i'm sure i I have to ask the question why would the fda be involved in that isn't that the ats job yeah like liquor alcohol tobacco uh, yeah well Uh, yeah but (laughs) <laughs> but these the, the funny I thing is no, see, this, this is where things get interesting. Really. Yeah, they do, but where, where the alcohol industry gets really weird is most of those are actual laws. Like yeah. that's not that's legislation that defines what can be called a bourbon and legislation that what can be you called. You know for a damn a fact that that's because some somebody by the not last name of Daniels or any Ooh. of the other, you know, producers Beam. here in the country. Yep. Yeah, showed up and got somehow got elected to Congress. And we're like, we need to pass this, and just shoved it the tail end. Well, I can, of some I can other pretty much thing. guarantee you some omnibus spending bill. Yeah, because yeah, I know what's guaranteed was Jim Beam. They're literally the single largest distiller on planet Earth by a very, very, very significant margin. They are the largest distiller of any spirits anywhere in the world. It is insane. They. Basically, if you buy a craft uh, bourbon, chances are Jim Beam actually made it. Uh, if you buy an overseas uh, whiskey, chances are very good that Jim Beam actually owns that company. It's They own everything. It is insane how gigantic <laughs> that company actually is. So they're like the whiskey There's, mafia. Hold on. The whiskey yeah, cartels. they are, too. Yeah. There's yeah. an actual FDA definition of a frozen cherry pie. <coughs> oh my god. <laughs> you know the sad thing is though this I know is... why that is. It's ridiculous, yep. but I know why that is is because if they didn't have a specific set down definition, then they couldn't actually prosecute anyone for violating any of the regulations because they just they just dispute yep. in court what a right. cherry pie. Okay, actually. I, I I have to read this just for shits and giggles. Okay. Uh this is 152.126 frozen cherry pie. A identity one frozen cherry pie, excluding baked and then frozen, is a food prepared by incorporating uh, the food prepared by incorporating in a filling contained in a pastry shell, mature, pitted, and steamed cherries that are fresh, frozen, and or canned. The top of the pie may be open or it may be wholly or partly covered with pastry or other suitable topping. Filling, pastry, and topping components of the food consist of optional ingredients as prescribed by paragraph A2 of this section. The finished food is frozen. So, uh, so if I, you roast your cherries, it's all right, not a so, cherry pie. All right, so you guys, right. you guys, if you're watching the video, you can see that, all right? You see the, the page? And it is... Kind of fuzzy, but yeah. Long, long, long. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... The absurdity of it, and you know, and I'm I'm an enthusiast of learning about law because I think it brings out a lot of the absurdities of law uh-huh. uh, by learning about them. But like, the more that you learn, the more you're like, "Are you serious? Who the like, fuck thought just... this was necessary? <laughs> why? Well, why then, do we need this?" I mean, if we want to talk about the absurdity of laws, I mean, we're going to go off on a tangent here. But in the city in which Andrew lives in, it is illegal to worry a squirrel. It is. Yeah. There's a prescribed fine for wearing a squirrel. Yep. <laughs> There's a prescribed fine in the town I grew up in for tying your horse to a tree in a public park. Jeez. Well, we've done podcasts, like entire podcasts about that before. On stupid laws. Oh, I know. Yeah. On stupid but laws. But I mean, yeah. this is just another Episode 69. One. That was sex laws. Yeah. yeah. That, was, nice. that was sex yeah. laws. Yeah. yeah, we also did, I think, dumb laws from around the country, yeah. too, and around the world, mm-hmm. and we've done one of those. But Was episode 69 still our most listened no, to episode? No, it was, actually, it was actually passed up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Sweet. Right. We're actually... Well, if you're listening now, you might want to go back and listen to episode Yeah, you should go 69. back and listen to it is, it is still our longest episode, and we, yeah. actually, we actually had to cut off, like, the last 10 minutes of that episode. No, not in the last ten minutes. Like the last three or four minutes of the episode, 
mm-hmm. uh, in order to be within Anchor's upload limit. <laughs> well, nice. It's a long one, so, so settle in. Yeah. You know, or if you're driving make... across country, you know, just put it on and yeah. keep driving. Yeah. You know, but I mean, just maybe like make aware. yourself some hot cocoa, wrap up in a blanket, you know, okay. settle in because uh, you're going for a ride. Yep. Yep. <laughs> we went state by state and we did the states like sex position and yeah. each state's yeah. like weirdest sex law. So yeah. And then we had fun. we had like two different websites going. Like Andrew had one website, I had another website yep. that we were reading off of and yeah. then Lindsay, think- Andrew's partner, she had a she had the, the list of uh positions by sex state and Derica was ridiculously in describing them. <laughs> yeah and uh it's a trip man it's a trip. jerica was the resident expert <laughs> she's the resident expert in a lot of things yeah well that's why i get the big buck yeah <laughs> well, speaking of ridiculous law state by state how about uh ohio state athletic association good segue <laughs> coronavirus rules students can wrestle but they can't shake hands. <laughs> so you can stick your hand through somebody's legs from the back and grab their fucking junk and rub your forearm all over their asshole, but you cannot shake their hand. Because yep. that, that would be dangerous. That's unsanitary. <laughs> yeah. uh, as winter sports begin across Ohio, officials with the Ohio High School Athletic Association have released requirements for players and coaches amid the coronavirus pandemic. Wrestling begins its season Thursday, so this is a couple weeks ago, uh, amid the pandemic under a new set of guidelines and rules to help prevent the spread of the virus. In a heavy contact sport like wrestling, OHSAA officials are trying their best to implement rules for players and coaches. Among the new rules is a student athletes are permitted to wrestle, but they must refrain from handshakes before and after the match. (laughs) So we're going to grope each other for minutes on end. And you then, can have your you can have your face itself shoved into the ass of another person, or into the yeah. face of the other person. Time. Yeah, the face but, of the person. Get uh, and some by of the us other do person. that, whether we have permission or not. <laughs> well, so, among the new, <laughs> also among the new rules, student athletes are permitted to. Uh, uh, wrestlers are also required to wear facial coverings off the mat when not actively competing or warming up. And oh, <laughs> wait, and those on the team bench need to observe social distancing of six feet. Oh, oh my god! god. Uh, another big change comes from the officiating. Uh, to conclude the match, uh, or to conclude the end of the match procedure, the official may point to the winning wrestler while raising his or her own arm, or his or her own arm, um, instead of raising the the person's so arm. The, the the athletes are able to manhandle each other and get all up in each other's shit but the ref can't come over and raise the arm of the victim and yeah and right. the wrestlers can't shake hands before or after nice they can teabag each other all fucking day <laughs> that's and that's right. fine right but you wouldn't want hand so, contact so like the aggression oh is okay but like the sportsman like stuff is not so yeah it's all okay. smoke and mirrors like oh, i mean that is for your safety is, ladies and gentlemen this is what yeah. pisses me off so much about this that people just aren't fucking seeing divide and conquer has always been the best fucking strategy for keeping a populace for from rising up against their own fucking government right pitting them against each other us versus them, splitting them into two or three adversarial groups. What they have done this time is split it into adversarial individuals or families. Every family is an adversary. Every fucking household is your fucking enemy. And like, I mean, how- really, what we should do at this point is we should just follow the Celtic tradition and we should just split into tribes. And then just start warring against each other endlessly because stealing cattle and yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, it just that yeah. seems like that. I, that seems well, I'm on board with this. Well. I'm on board. No, with I've that's, I've yeah. said it's just embrace yeah. this and run with it. And what what Derek is getting at only applies to us commoners, really. Right, right, yeah. right, right, right. So I've said it before. I said it in a post the other day, and it got a little bit of attention. 
Um, but we have a caste system in this country. Mm -hmm. But people don't want to have that conversation. Nope. Yeah, nope. they don't want to. They don't want to have the discussion of the fact that if you're rich, you get to play by rules that no one else does. Mm -hmm. yep. oh, yeah, yeah. Because all the, even, all the fine is is the amount of money that you pay for permission to do whatever it is that you're doing. Yeah. That, yeah what's yeah. what's yeah? What's a sixty-eight dollar parking fine when you have you know seventy-five million dollars in the bank? Yeah. So like, like no parking zones are really just rich people parking zones. Yeah. 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 Yep. Who cares? And if your car gets towed, oh well, I'll just pay the impound fee and get my car right back same day. Big yeah. deal. Who cares? Mm -hmm. Yep. No. Yep. And right. I have other cars, so. Yeah, and I can <laughs> well, and I can afford an attorney. I can afford the best of attorneys to then fight yeah. the law. I keep one on if... retainer, as a matter of fact, yeah. just to fucking mm -hmm. get me out of shit. Yeah, so it's like, oh, they they don't care about all this crap. They none of these regulations, none of this stuff matters to them. They don't care. So when they want to throw a great big party, and especially if you're a politician and rich, if you want to throw a fundraiser party, but you repeat yourself, get, oh yeah, yeah uh, and get and get a ton of people together. Well, that is absolutely okay. Right, because you're rich and a politician. But if Joe Blow down the streets, like, hey, I'm gonna have a barbecue because yep. it's um, my kid's bar mitzvah. All of a sudden, now it's going to be yeah. An issue. Um, uh, for example, there's a, a a restaurant in Michigan. I, I don't remember the name of the restaurant. I'm sorry, but uh, owned by a, a single mother of six, mm -hmm. facing a thousand dollar a thousand dollars a day fine for staying open. Right, but the uh, the restaurant here in Napa, where Gavin Newsom and all those other politicians hung out for his birthday, got seventeen times higher the payment protection program loan than similar restaurants in the area. Mm -hmm. Cast yeah. system. Yep. No, so, but speaking of cast system, and we have a full house to discuss this one, which I'm just gonna enjoy. Uh, you guys remember last year, January twentieth, they had the huge great Begaloo. the huge protest, the Great Begaloo mm -hmm. in Virginia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I coined that, that term by the way. Yes. That was put on by the Virginia Civilian Defense League. Yep. Right. V C D L president says no pro pro gun rally on lobby day. Claims quote double standard as gun control advocates. Take over the coveted time slots. <laughs> what was the uh, result of last year's protest? A big, fat, fuck fucking oh. nothing. Oh. 20, 22,000 people showed up and they passed like every single gun control bill except had, the assault weapons ban. It had, it had effectively zero, zero effect. And don't forget that last time around, they also uh, willingly disarmed to and went disarm, into the yeah, to area. disarm during their armed protest, so that they could go <laughs> into the fenced-in free speech zone. Uh huh. <laughs> in right. order to fight for their rights. Yeah, we're um, damn it, we mean it this time. Oh, I have to give up my gun and all right. Yeah, no, no, no. Did you want to strip search me too? Okay, yeah, all right. That's but damn it, I want freedom and I'm not going to take it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, the head of the gun rights group that organized a rally that drew 22,000 people to the state capitol in January said a similar event won't happen this year, claiming that a, quote, double standard allowed gun control advocates to book the majority of time slots for lobby day. Now, President just the, the fact that there's a fucking lobby day with time slots that you have to fucking beg for and get permits to use to protest your fucking government should be a big clue. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, President of the Virginia, C Virginia Citizens Defense League told members of the organization a message this week when he tried to apply for the 11 a.m. time slot for next year's Lobby Day, a tradition that gives citizens an opportunity to share issues they find important with their elected officials. <laughs> he was informed by the state's Department of General Services that the only times available were 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. So take 6 a.m. and refuse to fucking leave. You have guns, goddammit. 
Yeah, well, yeah. no, they don't because they voluntarily disarm. Because yeah, they disarm. So they don't have the free speech zone. Free speech yeah. zone. Uh, <laughs> the 11 a.m. time slot had been taken by the Virginia Senator for Pu- or Virginia Center for Public Safety, a group advocating for gun control that had previously tried to book the same time during last year's lobby day, but was beat out by the BCDL. <laughs> You keep uh, saying that you are protesting. I do not think it means what you mean. It does not mean. <laughs> I just, you're not, you are protesting nothing if you are doing it in an organized <coughs> manner that the people you are protesting have allowed. What you right. are yeah. simply doing is shouting at a brick wall. Right. Endlessly as they go about their day. Yeah. I, all you're uh, doing is reinforcing their fucking authority. Yeah. When you do it uh, that way. Van Cleef said in a message that a copy of a Freedom of Information Act document showed that Virginia Center for Public Safety had applied for the time slot on January 14th, 2020, more than a year before next year's Lobby Day on January 18th, 2021. He told members of the organization that he was notified that applications more than six months away from the day would not be granted. You, you know, he, sh- he should have a protest about that. Yeah. Protest the way that they run protests. Change it from the inside. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Change the protest system. Right. If they really wanted to try to affect anything, if they were really concerned about making sure their voices were heard about any of this, they would show up during that 11 o'clock. They would show up during that 11 o'clock time slot and just literally drive everybody out. Yep. Yep. Um, while the VCDL will not have a traditional lobby day, the group has called on members from across Virginia to take part in a four major caravans heading to Richmond. The four major caravans will all flood into the Richmond area over a four-hour period in the afternoon and will pass through the center of Richmond near wherever the Senate is meeting. So, like, protest social distance style. Is that what this is? It's just, yeah, it's essentially like what they did in Michigan where they yeah. flooded the streets with traffic so nobody could get anywhere. So yeah. who, oh yeah, who took the coveted 6 a.m. slot? Gun Owners of America. Uh, GOA. See, and the GOA bends like a fucking piece of plastic, too. Yep. Constantly. Yeah. They do that. They're, they're get, starting to head the way the NRA... Uh, the way the NRA, the only ones that I can think of that even remotely have a pair of balls anymore are the FPC. And the FPC is primarily a legal organization. Like mm-hmm. they do, mm-hmm. they file amicus briefs and everything else. And they do legal stuff and flood the courts with all sorts of legal uh, like lawsuits and everything else. And that's what they do. But at least that's what they were set up to do from the beginning. That's what they still do. They haven't stopped and they haven't gone oh, well, they, we were asked by senators not to do this anymore, so we're not going to do it. Like They're still like, no, fuck you. I'm still going to file these lawsuits. Bite me. Mm-hmm. I'm going to flood this court with so much crap that you can't do anything else until you address this. Yep. Like, right. They at least do that. It's still not quite you know, what I think is needed, but at least and it's they, doing something effective. And they do it without taking in nearly the amount of money that the NRA does. Yeah. Oh, yeah, not even yeah. close. Well, the NRA pisses away 90% of what they take in on... Hey, well, Wayne LaPierre, suits are expensive, man. Yeah. I just I actually just had this conversation with some Yoko and uh, freaking MeWe, one of my one of the gun groups I'm in. It was all, you know, President Orange Man this, Orange Man that, all and how wonderful he was. And I'm like, you realize that he's responsible for... You know his own gun control that just yeah. continued the the yep. problem instead of being part of the solution. He's like, well, yeah, you wouldn't have well, to worry about Biden's fiat actions on on AR-15s if if Trump hadn't already set up the precedent for that. With exactly, Trump didn't stopped, Trump which, appoint the head of the ATF? Yeah, he, the one oh, no, who he he failed to change the appointment. Oh, yeah, when they had the Republican-controlled House and the Republican-controlled Senate and the Republican president for the first two years of his term, he didn't change the head of the ATF? Yeah, he just left everything that Obama had appointed. And then in 2018, he did change it. He put put somebody else in there. But somebody else who, you know, worked with William Barr, who 
if I remember correctly, is the Attorney General of the United States. Yeah. A.G. Barr and is a pile of shit, too. A.G. Yeah. Barr is the reason Lon Harashi is not in a fucking cage rotten. Right? Yeah. And, and but I mean, the, the Barr was part of the, the Brady Bill in 94. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, but I mean, that's the thing, too, is that what you see with this, with, with the way that these guys are behaving in Virginia and, and constantly, is a direct result of Trump's election. I mean, make no mistake, it is a direct result of Trump's election, which is why I've been saying since he was elected, it's a psyop. Yeah. Because Hillary, as Hillary was looking like she was going to win, the political right was getting more and more militant. They were mm -hmm. starting to actually arm. They're starting to turn anti-government. They were getting ready. Yep. Like, we're going to go. We're going to do a civil war. We're going to do this. We're going to, you know, do all of these things. And Trump and pacified Trump them. Yeah, yep. and completely pacifies them instantly. And even though Trump is doing probably exactly the same things that his buddy who he said, and I quote, is a very good friend, Hillary Clinton, would have done. Yep. Even though he's doing the same things, because it's him, it's their guy, they're going to bend over and take it. And that's been happening for the past happily, four years. Happily take it. Yeah, yeah and they argue it's for just it. And, they, and, and make excuses for it. Yep. And yeah. defend it. Yeah, Endlessly, endlessly they do that. And now... That they've gotten so used to doing that because that's like a strategy, right? If you're if you're say in court, you're an attorney and you're interviewing a, a, a witness, and you want them to say to agree to something that they don't necessarily want to agree to, you'll ask them a bunch of questions. You know the answer is going to be yes to, and then you ask them another question very quickly after that, and they'll agree to it and they'll say yes because you've trained their brain to become agreeable. This is exactly the same thing, but on a much larger scale. You've trained them all to become very, very agreeable to whatever the government is going to do. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that the voices from the political right this time around with Biden being elected are very, very much quieter and more isolated and with way less support and are way less aggressive in and of themselves than they were four years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, only, the only person I see at all talking about any sort of like radicalization is Pete Kiona's, and he's talking about libertarians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's that's, which is a fantastic follow. I don't know if you guys do that, but um, Free Man Beyond the Wall podcast. He's a great listen. But um, yeah, I mean, the, the 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 great pacifier that we we've talked about him before. I think I called him the great appeaser, um, before, and that's that's what he was like with mm -hmm. with. The militia movement died with Trump coming into office, right? Yeah. And now, yep. now we we had like a little boogaloo, luau, big igloo spike, and that's there's still some remnants of that carrying on. But once that like got killed off social media, that died. Yeah, there's there's no yeah. there's no resistance to the government right now. The the yeah. or no real resistance to the government right now. The 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 resistance that exists, it's like Ammon Bundy and his group in Idaho. And it's like moms that own restaurants and bakeries in Michigan and Southern California, mm -hmm. and gym mm -hmm. owner gym owners in New Jersey. Yep. Right. Yeah. That's 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 the the resistance to government tyranny right now. And the issue the the reason this is happening is not because of radicalization; it's because of pacification. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. We, everybody, everybody on a on a large scale, even and us to a degree. And even us to a degree, like coronavirus we, we, thing mm -hmm. killed off the last of it. Yep. Like even us to a degree, like we read Brandenburg v. Ohio, we're like, okay, okay, we're not going to say too much because we don't want the government, you know, red flagging us. But yeah. we are to a, a degree pacified also. Yeah. Because there's some things well, that we won't say. You know, and don't and don't forget that that it's not like this is the only time this has happened. I mean, part of the reason no. that Samuel Adams was so important to the American Revolution was because he owned a pub. So yeah. he was able to get people there and concentrated together and then get them just drunk enough that mm -hmm. they were still capable of doing things, but they had let go of that fear. They had let go of those inhibitions. And then he talked them into doing things. The American Revolution yeah. doesn't exist without Sam Adams getting a bunch of people drunk occasionally yeah. and convincing yeah. them that going and destroying things is a good idea. Mm -hmm. So yeah. people again, up and that was necessary. Mm -hmm. Like, and then you look around yeah. today and you see what was the one, what were the first things they attacked? Restaurants, churches, and bars. Places people congregate. Yep. Well, and where the American Revolution was fomented. 
Yep. Yeah. People people need to use their bumps or their 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 pistol braces to hold their beers <laughs> and get drunk enough yep. to throw that stock on that little SBR now. Because yep. it's, well, yeah, it it's, it's the same. It's the same punishment. It's a fucking. It's the same felony at this point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you might as well make it full auto because it's going to be saying. exactly the same amount of jail time. And that's and the thing is, is that then when and when you even see that. Pen. Yeah, when mm-hmm. even when you say that these pe- the the ATF and stuff are horrified at that idea, and it's like, but the punishment is the same. You're turning us all into felons, and if on top of that, Biden then bans AR-15s altogether. Well, at that point, I might as well go SBR, and I might as well go full mm-hmm. auto on all yep. of them because mm-hmm. fuck it, who cares? It's the same punishment. I might as well have exactly what I want. And now, now you've made us go. Mm-hmm. Okay, we no longer care. You've pushed so yep. hard. That uh-huh. it is time for us to no longer care about your pushing. Yep. Uh, Frank yep. Zappa, great Frank Zappa said, uh, without deviation from the norm, progress is not possible. Yeah. And right now we're towing the line as the norm again and again and again. Yeah. Well, yeah. And they're, and they're, you know, and the reason that they're going, oh, well, we want the time slot. No, we're willing to do this. We're willing, is because if they don't, then the media starts going, oh, they're radicals. They're just insane. They're just these crazy radicals, blah, blah, blah. Yep. And they care about what the media has to say. Who the fuck cares? Why do you care? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. they, 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 they want to be the good guys. But that's well, yeah, and then everybody, every time you get a, a revolutionary spirit that's fermenting somewhere, they, the people that turn, whoever turns out to be the victors, are almost always painted out as the bad guys, especially in the media, mm-hmm. at the beginning. And then once they start gaining the upper hand, then all of a sudden it's like, oh well, maybe we should change our tune a little bit here. Well, yeah, just like, well, just like this past time. summer with all those protests. Yeah, and if you look yeah. at if you look at the the American Revolution and you you look at the way it was handled, the large the large scale press, right, which was British owned, British controlled, loyalist controlled, they continued to describe the you know the the revolutionaries, anyone who helped them, as radicals and crazies, and mm-hmm. and um, if the term anarchist had been coined yet, they would have thrown that one out. Um, mm-hmm. If the term terrorist had been coined, they would have thrown that one out. Yeah, look at all the the Just, talk right now about a uh, uh, domestic terrorism. Oh yeah, right. it's and and that's what you see. And in response, the 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 revolutionary the the revolutionaries just found their own fucking papers and go, well, we'll just print our own stuff and tell the truth about this stuff and whatever. Who cares? And do it. And they didn't care what that image is. And instead, now not only do they care what the British the the red coat papers have to say, but they're not even willing to found their own because they're like, oh well, then everyone would just look at it as this crazy fringe paper. It's this fringe reporting. It's this fringe media. So yeah. I don't want to be and part it of the always fringe media. Off that way. Well, I mean, and I hate to use uh, avowed statists' uh, own information or own outlets for this, but look at what's happened with Stephen Crowder and Ben Shapiro and these conservative outlets that they were basically kicked off of mainstream platforms. Because yeah. the mainstream platforms didn't agree with what they were trying to say. Look at, look at what they've so done. They is, built their yeah. own goddamn company. Google search results were fucking mm-hmm. suppressing them and shit like that. Right. Look yeah. what they've done to Zero Hedge. Yeah. yeah. Where's, Zero, where's Zero Hedge at? Yeah. Oh, it's dead. Yeah. It's effectively dead. It's meaningless now. Mm-hmm. It used to be great. It used to be a go-to for, mm-hmm. for authentic. Like it, Hell, Vice at one time was a go-to for authentic like coverage, unflinching objective coverage of things yep. where they reported hardcore, didn't care. And what you you don't even have that from them anymore. They've gone so hard left and are licking the boots of their masters so aggressively yep. that they can't they, they can and won't speak out. And these people need to realize in Virginia and everywhere else that if you keep worrying about what the public perception is because of mass media and because of what the mainstream is saying that you will be cowed by whatever they, the establishment wants to say yeah. about you. You and never the, get an opportunity. The point isn't to fucking fit in with public perception and court public perception. The point is to fucking change public perception. Smash the Overton window. 
Yeah. Right. And that's the only way that you're going to affect write your, any write kind your opinion, of real change. Write your opinion on a brick and throw it through the fucking Overton window. Yep. No. Oh. But now that I got everybody's blood pressure <laughs> up. Um, IMF proposes tracking web history to determine credit scores. Of course they do. Wait. Yeah. Oh, no, I, that's you if know you want a definition. Of there is there is empire. so much fun in this article. You know, gonna, I did, I did not see that coming. Yeah, you're, you're gonna love this. You're gonna love this. Okay. You know, my glass is entirely too empty for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, we all know that we're never really safe online. That our web history is likely being tracked. But for what reason may we ask ourselves? A new blog post by the in, by the International Monetary Fund may provide some insight. Four researchers examine the results of a working paper that explore the ever-evolving relationship between f- finance and technology. Quote, we study the effects of technology, technological change on financial uh, intermediation, distinguishing between innovation and information, that is data collection and processing, and communication, that is relationships and distribution writes experts in the study. The researchers further look at the possibility of using your browsing search, your browsing, your search, and purchase history to determine your credit score. This may allow some individuals that are overlooked by financial institutions to have access to more loans, states the writers. The uh, researchers no, go the other way. The researchers yeah. argue that if lenders have a better picture of a client's entire history, they may be more willing uh, to be lenient with them. Quote, banks tend to cushion credit terms for the long-term customers during downturns, they write. Or is this just how they're going to create the next subprime lending market? To put it in simple terms, to put it in simple terms, the proposal is that giving banks access to most our private data would develop an intimate relationship that will allow more of us to benefit from this cushioning. The yeah. writers do acknowledge they have that a plenty lead. intimate the relationship sh- with banks. They all fuck me regularly. <laughs> yeah. the, the writers do acknowledge that this would lead to huge privacy and publicity concerns, and this this just may take this make this idea unworkable. You know, you the think? thing is, too, it better is, fucking make it this, unworkable. It, well, this this is not this is not new because this is being done right now. Remember, China's social credit social credit, social credit yeah. scores. Yeah, this, yeah, that's exactly what exists. I was thinking about. Yeah, maybe this is so, all something that they're peddling because of the Great Reset. Well, Gosh, China no. because China's a fucking basically a dictatorship, right? They got to do it like all at fucking once and just cram it down people's throats. But because we have the illusion of more freedom here in the West, they have to fucking spoon feed it to us or fucking drip it into our fucking IV lines with or little bites here and there, yeah. little bits and pieces. Yeah, for, for now. I mean, that's the thing is for yes. now, they recognize that right now the frog is not boiled at this point. We're still just rebellious enough uh-huh. that we will, if they try to do it all at once, even people who would otherwise not mm-hmm. fight back against it will mm-hmm. begin fighting back against it. Mm-hmm. Right. So they have to trickle it in because they need these policies to not exist until they have worked their way close enough, slowly but surely, that the people who 10 years ago said, this is going to happen, you need to watch out for it and everything – already look like they're crazy by uh, the time it actually happens. Right. 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 Yeah. So yeah. so what you're saying is we need to be hit with more propaganda? Yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah. yeah hey, you know, like uh, segues. Like very effective yeah. segues. Yeah. Like Dr. Fauci saying he gave Santa a COVID-19 vaccine and that Santa is good to go. Oh, uh. Okay, before we get into this, I have to throw this out there. If you, any of you have ever heard of Dry Bar Comedy, it's a YouTube channel yep. where they do stand-up comedy, mm-hmm. go and look up Santa oh, yeah. does stand-up. That shit is hilarious. <laughs> he got a shit Dry crowd, bars. but that shit is hilarious. Yeah, Dry Bar is, dry bar is pretty good. They're, they're a, a literally dr- a dry bar, and they uh, only hire comics who are clean. So yeah. everybody yeah. works clean, but it's freaking hilarious very frequently. Okay. And that one's that one's definitely very good. That one's one everybody should look. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The fact that he said this 
during a Sesame Street ABCs of COVID special. Mm. Makes it even worse. Okay. Um, so, so he said this on a state owned network on a state owned, you know, show as a way to indoctrinate children. Got it. Yeah. Um, yeah. This, thanks. Thanks to Dr. We Anthony have no Fauci. idea why you have problems. Is this we are to protect the well, what's, what's the what's the, the famous quote? You know, give me your children or something like that. Yeah, it's um the I, I believe the quote and it's from um, uh, Himmler was or no it wasn't Himmler's um um Goebbels the quote Goebbels, from Goebbels, yeah. something about if you can if you I if you give me the adults I can only go so far but if you give me the children, children. Yeah. there is you know it's effectively there's no limit to what I can convince them of if yeah. they're children. So, uh, thanks to Dr. Anthony Fauci, Santa Claus will be coming to town despite the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. Fauci, 79, assured kids around the world on Saturday that St. Nick is, quote, good to go this holiday season. As the nation's top infectious disease specialist said he visited Santa himself to give him the COVID-19 vaccine. Wait, what if an official from another nation claimed the same thing? Who's he to talk to all the children in the world? I don't know. Right? It's just the way it works. Um, <laughs> after receiving questions from kids asking if Santa would still be making his rounds this year, Fauci revealed on CNN's The ABCs of COVID-19 special that he, quote, took care of Santa and that kids should have nothing to worry about this Christmas. Quote, I have to say I took care of that for you because I was worried that you'd be upset, Fauci said on Saturday. Quote, After so what I spent I, the last year trying yeah. to fucking make you upset. Yeah, so what I did mm -hmm. a little while ago, I took a trip up there to the North Pole. I went there and I vaccinated Santa Claus myself. Quote, I measured his level of immunity and he is good to go. He can come down the chimney. He can leave presents. You have nothing so, to worry about. Santa Claus is good to go. That's really fucking nefarious in my mind that he's planting this idea in children's heads that they can measure the level of somebody's fucking immunity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They can't fucking do that. All I mean, they can look at antibodies or whatever, but they can't measure the level of somebody's fucking immunity. It's not cool for them to fucking suggest that they can. Yeah, it's yeah ridiculous. It's scary. It's scary yeah. how much how much propaganda is actually. Just in this little statement. Yeah. And um, how much people aren't seeing it that way. I know. Yeah. Uh, Fauci's comments come one week after the FDA issued an emergency use authorization to the Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine. It's distribution across the country, blah, 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 blah. Um, the uh, Bell's Palsy shot. Yeah, yeah. Quote, Santa is exempt from this because... Um, okay, so quote, Santa is exempt for this because Santa, of all the good qualities, has a lot of good innate immunity. Santa is not going to be spreading in, any infections to anybody. That's another quote from Fauci. Well, if he had exist, I mean, if he existed, he would be magical anyway. So somehow I feel like that's probably, I mean, if he can deliver presents in Africa to kids with like, you know, smallpox, I feel yeah. like probably COVID's yeah. good. Yeah. But, you know, one of the things that was, and I had to look it up again, um, the, the, there's a really good paper out there called Goebbels um, Principles of Propaganda. Um, that yep. I think everybody should read because it's really good. But rule 12 is that good propaganda will be used by, or will be said by someone with clout with the general audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so, if, if, yeah, if you or I said that, we're just some wacko on the, you know, on the internet. But Fauci being the top vaccine expert or the top whatever they called him in, in the nation, he's on TV, people know him, they like his face, people trust him as much as you can trust a government official. But not only not only that, children don't know him. Children mm -hmm. don't trust him. So he he invokes yep. somebody that children do yep. know and trust. Yep, and that's exactly yep. where I was going. Is he used somebody that children would trust that that they would go, oh, I know this guy. I trust him. He's yep. good. He's and friend, then he's friends with he Santa Claus. Yeah. yeah. If if he got it, now they're yep. like, oh, okay. Well, Santa got it, and I trust. No one trusts Santa. And he's on this show with all these other characters that I know and trust. 
Well, now? then clearly I can trust this. So uh-huh. now they're more likely to just accept the vaccine. And it's mm-hmm. the this whole COVID thing, like I've been checking it against like Goebbels uh, principles and it's really unsettling how well this yeah. all follows. No, it's outright rules. fucking creepy. Yeah. Yeah, it is, it's and, and if you if you check like all the like everything that's happened in the last couple of decades with the government, check it against mm-hmm. shit like rules for radicals oh, and yeah. stuff mm-hmm. like like you can mm-hmm. go back to all the shit these people have published, and you can you can look at our history and at things that are mm-hmm. happening now, and you can see that they are following the playbook step by fucking. Stat. Yeah, there was a there's yeah. a video put out yep. by Storm Clouds Gathering uh, a couple of years ago. It's on YouTube um, called Psychology of Power, and it that's what it does. It, it covers Goebbels. It covers the U.S. media and the U.S. propaganda efforts, studying Goebbels and taking from his work and and adding to it. Um, and it, there is there's huge there's a huge power grab when you can. That that or a huge power grab that exists when you can you can create a, a, a way to take people's individual identity and instill a collectivist identity. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Right. So you yeah. lose you lose your individualism, and mm-hmm. you become literally part of the herd. Mm-hmm. And even even if you even if you fundamentally disagree with something being said. Mm-hmm. You still won't fight it because it's what yeah. the herd wants. Yes. Well, yeah. I mean, even if you uh, to tie this in with something that we talked about earlier, even if you fundamentally disagree with everything that's going on, you still don't show up and do your protest at your because you weren't able to get your allotted fucking time slot. Yeah. Because well, of, because of the, yeah. the normal the normalcy bias of following the law, we're law abiding citizens. We want to be seen as positive. We want to be the the good guys. Blah 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 blah. But when the law is immoral and the law and it's just outright fucking wrong, mm-hmm. they'll still follow it because they don't want to be outlaws. Yeah. yeah see, that's the thing, and that's, and that's what I was that's getting. Where, at. Yeah, that's where the the principles, the, all of those principles come into play. That's where those principles of propaganda come into play. Is you make it seem as if one, the government is telling the truth. The people, well, the people disseminating the propaganda because he doesn't. You know, Goebbels' principles of propaganda are actually used by a lot of big corporations for advertising and things. They're, you know, but it's, you make it seem like, well, everyone thinks this, and especially the experts think this, and the people that you trust think this, and you are responsible to all of those people, and you're responsible to your neighbors who also think that. So what makes you special that you think you can just disagree with what everyone else thinks. No, no, no. Right. You have to be a part of this because everybody else thinks that way. And whether yeah. they do or not is irrelevant as long as you tell the lie big enough and loud enough and long enough. And as and- long as people aren't fucking desperate. That's the other side of it. That's the other element that has to be in place. And I've told Kevin this before. I said, nothing is going to happen as long as people still feel like they have too much to lose. Yeah. It's yep. like our, our, our natural, like we have natural primal instincts, right? Our, our natural primal mm-hmm. instincts, like the two easiest ones to trigger are fear and anger. Yep. Right. Well, that's what most literally like probably 99% realistically of, of all advertising is mm-hmm. right. Propaganda mm-hmm. is just advertising. You see it on TV every single day. Yeah. Right. The, the, I mean, they even talk about it, you know, FOMO, fear of missing out. Yeah. Right? That's propaganda. Uh, such as, like, the the COVID numbers. And sex is the other yeah, one, obviously. Yeah, yeah. 318,000 deaths in the United States from COVID. Right? That's People freak out about that number, right? That's like one-tenth of one percent yeah. of the U.S. Mm-hmm. population. Yeah. Right? You, you, yeah. Would, you would think people are dropping dead well, in the street. I had a, a friend that... Uh, she didn't leave her house for 90 days, 90 days. Yeah. Because the, she was too busy watching CNN and all of the, the ma- mainstream media networks when this thing first kicked off and they were pushing so much fear porn that it literally 
cowed her into barricading herself in her house. Well, and they did and it then, insidious as fuck, too. Oh, they, the they did. But, I mean, she it took probably three months of talking after that those first two that she was cowed in. Finally, after a month of talking to her and saying, look, this is what they want you to do. They want yeah. you to be a willing slave and do exactly what you're told. And they, they're using all of this information to drive that fear in you. So you become a willing slave. Mm -hmm. And now, I mean, now she's finally woke up enough on it that she, I mean, she doesn't go outside, do her mask thing or anything like that. She goes about her daily fucking life. And, you know, she does what we would all do. Yeah. Well, and, you know, and to your, you know, to the point of the until people have nothing to lose, that actually just the other, uh, just a little bit ago, um, Lindsay and I were watching a, a Shaolin master, an actual Shaolin mm -hmm. master, talk about um, various films and the realities of, of the Kung Fu and stuff that they mm -hmm. show in them. And he's talking about this scene where the guy gets run through with a sword and just walks up the blade so that he can stab the bit of his broken sword into the guy's heart and kill him too. Because at that point guy, he had nothing left to lose. Right. And yeah, and he says, well, when you're all when you've already accepted that you're that you're dead, then you might as well make it worth it, is essentially what he said. And yeah, and there have been like warrior she, cultures in the past that that they have rituals where they count themselves dead before they go into battle. The, 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 the Maori to live again. The Maori Haka dance. That's literally yeah. what the Haka dance yep. is about. Yeah, it's and and that's the thing is that she she didn't get it right. She didn't understand what like what he meant. She's like, I just can't wrap my head around that. That like you're just okay with dying, so you just do something that you know it's is going to kill you. It's not about being okay and with I it said, or not. You accept yeah, that it's happening, yeah, whether you're okay with it or not. Yeah, right. and I said, well, you have to you have to understand that like for if especially if you're a warrior, if you're approaching it from the warrior mentality, and this is where guys like me, you know, are are different than than most people, where we have that warrior mentality, where we're like, if I'm dead anyway, who cares? You literally die. So yeah, times. so yeah, in in my case, like I I'm not afraid of death. Like I'm afraid of the transition from life to death. That's probably gonna hurt. Like I'm afraid of pain, but the death thing doesn't scare me at all. Like yeah. I just. Like when well, I was riding the helicopter the, to the ground, the saying goes that dying is easy. It's what's hard yeah. is for the people that are left dying. Yeah. Well, yeah. But I mean, it's, it's what it is, is like when I was riding the helicopter to the ground, right? Like we're spinning into the ground and my thought wasn't, oh God, I'm going to die. My thought was, I really hope this doesn't hurt. Like I just yeah. wanted, if I'm going to die, like just let me die on impact and it's just done and okay, whatever. So right. the problem is that most people don't have that mentality. They don't have the mentality that if I'm dead anyway, if this is actually going to kill me anyway, then why am I scared of it? Why would I be scared of it? Yeah. I can't do anything to stop it. I'm going to die. So I might yep. as well do something to make that death worth it. It's the same reason why you shouldn't worry about an incoming planet killer uh, asteroid. Because yeah. what you put, put, up, put up your hand and say, no, stop, don't come. Yeah. yeah. This is an <laughs> asteroid. <laughs> it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, you can't put up science. It, it's no. not going to work. So who cares? Who and cares at that point? And it should be the same thing for people with the virus. If they actually believe it is that deadly, who cares at this point? If I get yeah. it, I get it. Whatever. Right. Fatalism has over. its fucking uses for keeping <laughs> people sane. It's yeah. true. Right. And, but you know what? There are plenty of people in the population, not the majority by any stretch of the imagination, probably 15 percent that can resist this. And, and and they can they can develop that attitude without believing that they're going to die. Mm -hmm. People who I think we're probably among this group where whatever's going to happen is going to yeah. fucking happen. I'm not going to yeah. let it stop me. And as a matter of fact, I think we have a fucking article about a guy who didn't let anything <laughs> fucking stop him. Yes. Yeah. You want to get onto that hey, one? Look, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter to what you're throwing in my one. path. We're doing it. I want. Yeah. I wanted. I was gonna say that for the end, but uh, yeah, we'll we'll do that one. Um. Okay. This article. I fucking love this guy. I think. I think. And the and then show notes. I call this like top five greatest acts of love ever or something yes like that. most romantic <laughs> okay all right uh, so this article is from the irish post 
and it's a uh, man jailed for crossing Irish Sea Irish Sea on jet ski to visit girlfriend. And I yeah. would jet ski five hundred miles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then and then walk fifteen miles. Yeah, yeah and I would walk. cross the sea and then walk fifteen miles. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the, thing is, yeah. the right. Irish Sea isn't even all that big. Just to be fair, it's it's just really not all that girlfriend. big. Yeah, yeah, it's... but it took him four and a half hours on a jet ski, and the Irish oh, Sea is it's, cold. It's very it's cold, cold, and, and it is stormy as shit. Yeah, it's yeah. stormy as shit all the time, all the time. It doesn't matter what the the sky looks like. You get out into the Irish Sea, and it's like I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> Yeah, kind of like that drunken Irishman at the pub. I mean, but yeah. he's only in jail because he broke quarantine, isn't that right? Isn't it like? Yes. Yeah. 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 So this guy didn't <laughs> give a shit, right? All right. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. Just start reading, Jason. This is a great article. Okay. Uh, at a, a 28 year old man who's been jailed for four weeks. For fucking four weeks. 28-year-old man has been jailed for four weeks for breaching the Isle of Man's coronavirus restrictions after he bought a jet ski and crossed the Irish Sea to reach her. Dale McLaughlin... Wait, he, he wasn't... You didn't even... So, hang on. So, he didn't even go all the way to Britain? No. No. His girlfriend is Manx. Yes. He, went, yeah. he just went to the Isle of Man, which is halfway in... Like, it's in the middle. Yes. Four and a half hours. Yes. <laughs> on a jet ski right. in the what? Irish Sea. Yep. Derek has got twinkles in her eyes, you guys. <laughs> I fucking love this article. All right. I love it. Uh, Dale McLaughlin from Scotland told authorities he had never used a jet ski before. Oh, that fucking explains it. The Scots That's why are it took him crazy. four hours. And, <laughs> and, and bought one solely so he could reach his girlfriend on the Isle of Man. <laughs> This dude. Now, I oh, have to wonder okay. if this is the first that time also... he did it. Or is this yeah. the first time he got fucking caught? That, no, he's never that, that ridden also, a jet ski before. Never, never yeah, ridden that, a jet ski. No, bought he a jet bought ski one. specifically. Jesus Christ. If he's, if he's Scottish and he's going to visit a Manx girlfriend, that actually makes more sense why it took him four hours. Because he wasn't going across. He was coming down. Yeah. So he wasn't yeah. crossing so much as going the length of the Irish Sea, which... It's a lot longer. And uh, nope, not on a jet ski. I ain't doing that. Fucking, I don't care. I, you could literally be like, my parents aren't home, and uh, I'm just going to get on my knees <laughs> when just, you get here. And I, I'm I just still not doing that. No? Yeah, I'm still not doing that. That's still not happening. One, because but the Irish sea this is, is so full. Cool. This is too much there, effort. This yeah. is too much <laughs> effort just for a booty call. Yeah, this guy is in love. Yes, okay. this this, yes. this man has the he has the Celtic fiery love gene that we have, and so he is yeah. willing to do whatever it takes. He's like, like, okay, like, like, like come the, to the, prince, the Princess Bride, <laughs> Dread Pirate Roberts. Oh, yes, no. yep. takes a, takes a step yeah. down. This guy takes the crown. Yeah, yeah. yep. I he was, she she probably talked to him, and he was like, "As you wish," and <laughs> off he was. Yep, in as the, you yeah. wish. Yep. <laughs> He has to prove his so love. Did he to buy the lady. jet ski that day and just set off, or what? Uh, he had never used a jet ski before and bought one solely so he could reach his girlfriend on the Isle of Man. Right, so that, but that's of the on the day. And she doesn't even live on the beach. He had to walk for fifty. Can I just miles. Can, can I read the article? Can yes, get there? please. Can get there, please. All right. Calm down. We're we're all hopeless romantics here. Yes. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, I mean, we're not on this guy's level, but we're hopeless roommates. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> this guy is not, not a hopeless romantic. That. This is a guy that says that, fuck uh, everything. This yeah, guy, this, this is a guy. This, this is a, a a wing and a prayer romantic. This guy's yeah. up uh-huh. there. Yeah, this guy oh, makes yeah. it fucking yeah. happen, you romantic. Endured, yeah, you endured like getting your balls smacked repeatedly, horrific shrinkage, uh, <laughs> full <laughs> temperature. <laughs> An extreme boredom. He could have fucking died. Like he seriously yeah. could have. Yeah, fucking he tempted died. fate Very hard for Yeah. All right. Uh, twenty-eight-year-old man has been jailed for four weeks for breaching the Isle of Man's coronavirus restrictions after he bought a jet ski and crossed the Irish Sea to reach her. Dale McLaughlin from Scotland told authorities he had never used a jet ski before and bought one solely so he could reach his girlfriend on the Isle of Man between Britain and Ireland. 
He had estimated the trip would take around 40 minutes, but instead he was traveling through rough waves for almost four and a half hours. <laughs> Once he reached the Isle of Man, uh, McLaughlin walked 15 miles to reach his girlfriend's home in Douglas. And spent t- and the two spent the weekend together before he was arrested for breaching the Isle of Man strict coronavirus restrictions. You know, at least got, lad, so much, I, I salute you. I was gonna say, at, at least uh, he got got what he came for <laughs> yeah. before he got arrested. He didn't get picked I, up at the door or anything best, like that. Yeah. Best weekend ever. Yeah. Right? I well, and how can she possibly ever marry anyone but him at this point? Yeah. Because like <laughs> any other boyfriend that she may ever have, it's gonna be like it's oh, gonna be a big letdown. Yeah, yeah you like see- this guy is like this is like peak <laughs> fucking yeah. romanticism. This is like, yeah, you're never until, gonna find a man. Who's if gonna if do they that. if until they ever break he- up, if they ever break up and she starts a sentence, well, well, Dale would have just leave her. Yeah. Yeah. you'll yeah. never measure up. You're done. You'll yeah. never measure up. Never. You'll not never not that I'm up. sure he was measuring up after four and a half hours in the IRC. He's already. Is she had a warm place for it? Yeah, right. He's and already three sizes that day. It's, <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. You know, we 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 Celts we're we're very proud people, but there there are some things that we're not so proud of. So there's a reason we don't talk about them a lot. Yeah, well, <laughs> just saying. <All> right, uh, <laughs> so uh, once you reach the Isle of Man, McLaughlin walked 15. Okay, uh, the Isle of Man has seemingly managed to beat the coronavirus, uh, having gone more than six months without a case of local transmission. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, that's uh, uh, McLaughlin did not have permission. Believe me, by the time he got there, he was clean. All right, he'd been doused in salt water for four and a half fucking hours. <laughs> Can you imagine how pruny this poor man was? His <laughs> arms would have been pruny by the time. I hope yeah. he had hold a on, fucking wet. Hold on, hold on. There's, 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 there's a quote <laughs> here, and there's a, there's a little bit of explanation, explanation at the end. Uh, the island has been, oh, the island has only been able to accomplish this by extremely strict measures on who enters the Isle of Man, and citizens of other countries, even other parts of the United Kingdom, may not enter without express permission from the government. Uh, Mr. McLaughlin did not have this permission, as Chief Minister of the Isle of Man Howard Quayley said in a statement that he was that he quote was aware of the law and showed a vag- vagrant disregard when they chose to break it, mixing into the community and potentially putting lives at risk. Okay, so okay. that's absurd. The BBC <laughs> adds, the BBC adds so, that Mr. McLaughlin had twice applied for permission to visit his girlfriend from Scotland and was denied both times. So he tried to do it the right way, and then because they were being unreasonable, he did an unreasonable yeah. thing. Well, and the thing is, is that the, the I don't Manx, find what he did very unreasonable. The Manx, the Manx government actually has the capability of being of doing things like this, which is really weird, because uh, fun fact, the Isle of Man has the oldest operating parliament on planet Earth. Yep. Um, All right, now here's... They actually are independent of Britain without being independent of Britain. It's really weird, but they their government on the Isle of Man, even though they're part of the UK can just disregard anything that yeah. the UK wants and be separate. So like when they lock down their borders, even though it's the same country, even if it's like, oh, well, you can't travel outside the country, they can still say, and you also can't travel here. Like they can still right. lock down their own borders independent. All right, here's the here's the kicker. This is, this is the one that's going to make Dirica see the more stars. Uh, the couple had met in September of this year. When McLaughlin had traveled to the Isle of Man as part of its job as a roofer. Huh. So for what, like three months? They knew each other for three months and he did this? Lady boner. That yeah, that that dude loves that woman. He's that is the kind of guy and that is the kind of love that you would have like thrown down in a joust or like swords oh, yeah. you know, like mm-hmm. duel thing back in the day for like that's yeah. essentially what this is. This is a modern version of a joust hey, with the entire government. It's like fucking and the one of Troy. I mean, like, this is yeah. the kind of love that starts wars. All right. Yeah. You know what? The four weeks Jesus. in jail, totally worth it. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's yeah. worth it. I, I don't think he regrets that even one little fucking bit. Probably doesn't. I okay. wish I had a much. Uh, uh, article. Him, he's going to come out and go, <laughs> no fucks given. Well, when All I first right. got okay. here. Article from <laughs> Daily Do Mail. Do we have a picture of him? Oh, yes. And of her. 
Okay. Uh, this is an article from the Daily Mail that was produced today. That says, uh, girlfriend of Romeo Scottish roofer who was jailed for crossing the Irish Sea to, Isle, to see her on the Isle of Man on a jet ski says she wants to marry him. Yes, uh, she duh. should. So, <laughs> I say that there was a question about this? Him and her? It's a little blurry. She's, she's so not, pretty. She's gorgeous. Uh, I mean, uh, he kind of is. He looks too. like a relative of Andrew's almost. Look no? at them. Yeah, so he, cute. Well, Again, we all look the same, man. I'm not even offended by that. We all look the same. Our genetics have been isolated for a pretty significant amount yeah, of time. Yeah. Um, her name is Jessica Radcliffe. <laughs> she is 30 years old. Um, and she said today that she would accept proposal if he popped the question. She's older than him, then. A couple years older than him. Two, two years well, older. Yes. How cute, though. They're like adorable. She's yeah, got red. That's... She's got red head and freckles. I like. I was I'm, gonna I'm say down. they are gonna they are gonna produce beautiful, very Celtic, red headed, blue eyed <laughs> babies. Yeah. Oh, there's there's a better picture of her. She's got like really nice eyes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You. They are going to. Pre- I mean, she's got like a five head. I'm not gonna lie, but uh... I, I can overlook that. <laughs> uh, there, yeah. There's, can, yeah. there's a better picture of his of, uh, his eyes for you, Jerica. Yeah, he's a cutie patootie. Look at him. He looks very Scottish. I'm, I mean, very Scottish. Uh, <laughs> he's, yeah, he's like, like if you look up Scott in, on the internet, it, a picture of people who look like that is what comes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, yes. Uh, they're, man, but he's only a roofer too. Like, just to put he it should have like, popped I mean, the question. Like, that, that would have been the most epic proposal. In the history of the fucking world. Yeah. Like Roll you up on your jet ski, walk to her yeah. house, knock on the door. She opens you it. You're written, on one yeah. knee. You yeah, broke you every fucking ski. law. You broke quarantine. You almost fucking died. Uh, yeah. 20, you you, 25, 25 miles. That's how yeah, far you he, he rode the jet ski. ski. You walk 15 seas. miles when you are fucking chilled to the bone from yeah. the Irish Sea. From yeah. Four and a half hours in the Irish Sea. <laughs> exactly. He and probably didn't think about it because he that. showed up and he probably didn't think about that, Jerica, when he got there. Because when he got there, he collapsed from hypo fucking thermos. Yeah, his probably. His, yeah, it would have come out if he had tried. It would have come out at the doorstep. Yeah. As, woo, 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 woo. I want to know. I want to know if she knew miles. that he was coming. Twenty five yeah. miles. Oh, geez. Did she know that he was on his way? I, I feel like I she would have met that. him at the beach if she'd known that he was on his way. Oh, I mean, eh. I mean maybe, the- maybe not, because maybe they were, you know, if she knew he was on his way. Wow. Um, she looks kind of like Natalie Portman. That's a fine lass. Yeah. Um, that's, if, I she mean, had, spe- if she had known he was on his way and she he, met okay, him at the he beach, drove. He drove, 70, he drove 75 miles to get to the dock where he took off from. I I, I kind of figured he couldn't have fought, just the look of him. He he couldn't have been from the coast. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So that makes sense. It's He's probably, I'm going to guess, like Edinburgh area, maybe slightly north of that. Um, he's and, and so he's driving. He drives 75 miles. Mm-hmm. He then rides a jet ski another 25, which is already 100 miles. And 25 miles of that was in rough, cold, nasty seas, completely exposed to the elements because he's on a jet ski. Yep. And then, once that's done, he walks he walks in so- soaking yep. wet, freezing cold, another 15 miles. Yeah, of course she's going to marry the man. Are you kidding me? Yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't look like, he doesn't look very protected. Yeah, that looks like a, just a regular dry suit. Huh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and he and consider he's only a roofer, which means that the amount of money that he needed to spend mm-hmm. on the jet ski and on the uh, dry suit and everything was probably most of what he had on hand at all. He's not paying bills this month. So mm-hmm, like right? that is a that is a hell of it. Like he sacrificed basically everything. Just in the yep. name of what he knew may only be a few hours. Just for the pleasure of being in her presence. Right. Uh, it quote, doesn't get any more quote, fucking quote from romantic. her. Quote from her. Um, yeah. 
I had a man Jesus. cross the Irish Sea for me on a jet ski. I don't think one other woman can say that. He must really love me, my little legend. Yes. Oh, he is yeah. a legend. He's yes. a fucking legend. Yes, and he yeah. also tested po- or tested negative for COVID. Yeah. So he didn't even have COVID, and he's still being thrown in jail for a month. Yep. Now when he gets out, are they going to send him back to Scotland, or does he get to stay? Yeah, that's oh, the question. Ain't staying, I don't know. He ain't staying on the Isle of Man. They ain't letting him do that. Yeah. Guaranteed, they're going to ship him back to Scotland, despite the fact that having been an, in a jail on the Isle of Man and been in the Isle of Man, he may have been exposed there and yeah. maybe taking it back. They don't care. They're still going to ship him back. Well, Guaranteed. now it's time for her to woman up and pack her shit and move to fucking Scotland. Yeah, and just like mm-hmm. permanently alter her address and be like, no, I'm, I'm moving. This is it. We're done. I'm heading... Although, if I had a choice between Scotland and the Isle of Man, I'm probably going Isle of Man, to be honest with you. Ah, uh, she is a, she is a, she is a healthcare place. worker. So she can oh. work anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Oh, especially if she moves further into the UK, because the NHS is not prepared for the... Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> for her and but for I mean, the staff. Yeah, the but I mean like the oh man the if you can okay oh, the, right. the Isle of Man just because it's way cooler it's so much neater the history is better the yeah from from a local yeah. paper from a local paper um he landed on the beach 15 miles from Jessica's home um and the jet ski had about 10 minutes worth of fuel left in the tank oh my god oh nothing like cutting it close there guy yeah. Uh, <laughs> Be a long, oh, okay. float she also north. says that she was unaware he had traveled by jet ski from the aisle until police knocked on the door two days after he arrived. So, so he, he didn't, didn't even, even tell her. her. No, nope. it was a surprise, dude. Dude, legend. Yeah, I'll, legend. Drop, legend. I'll drop. I'll drop the local link in the uh, the Telegram chat for you, Derica. Yeah, that is fantastic. That man is. Yeah, he's. You know he what? gives and, me hope for humanity. <laughs> you know what? You know what irritates me? You know what actually irritates me about this? Is after Outlander, all these women were already obsessed. Like they had disregarded us Irish and had already started going for the Scots arbitrarily. <laughs> this is only going to reinforce that, you son of a bitch. That's only going to make it worse. Yep. Hey, look, Next I'm time. just saying Highlander ne- romance is a big fucking genre. Hey. Next know, time, but next mean, time like, Kevin won't, yeah. Next time Kevin won't, you know, get up and get you something. Just throw this out at him. <laughs> or be like, yeah, just look at him and be like, you know, Jamie or Mr. McLaughlin would. Dale, yeah. and just Dale. that's it. Dale. Just Jamie. Dale, Jamie's yeah. good enough. We watched Outlander together. He knows the reference. Yeah, I mean, I I actually read the books. I'll admit, I read the books, and I actually really, really enjoyed the books. And they're yeah. Good. Um, but the, and I love the historical references there, so, yeah. <laughs> but All right. the, I mean, just the fact that this guy, like he's, he's Scottish. And so this is just stacking, man. This is stacking on top of Jamie we will, already from Outlander. We will never, we will never measure up. This is, this is, yeah. this is the, the highest, this is, this is, this is the, this is the apex. Yeah. Yeah. That all this man is ever. ever. Forever. The Scots we'll have always against. been the apex of like the romantic male archetype. And they're a goddamn Irish colony. This is unfair to the parent <laughs> country. All right. <laughs> all right. This is unfucking fair. Oh, we've talked about this almost as long as he was on the jet ski. All right, let's um <laughs> But it's such a feel-good story. <laughs> I know, and I don't do those very often. We yeah. have to. We have to break that. We have to either talk about guns or Seattle. Yeah, uh, we only have a little bit of time left, so, so let's talk about Seattle. Oh, I knew you were gonna go there. <sighs> we already kind of talked about guns. Is why seattle city council's poverty defense idea stirs strong response listen to how dead his voice is having to talk about this stupid bullshit oh, after talking goodness. about that wonderful story <laughs> which is probably why he was trying to save it for the end probably yeah. uh burglars taped the back the back door window of the matthew Steele barbershop in ballard before they shattered the glass with a slingshot in the six minutes that these were inside, they made off with $4,000 worth of goods, 
uh, owner Matthew Humphrey said. He figured they would sell high-end jackets and other products online to make money. But when he heard that Seattle lawmakers were considering a proposal that would allow people to steal and then resell the items in order to generate money to meet a basic need like rent or food, he couldn't believe it. Quote, I think it's absolutely insane, Humphrey said. The Seattle City Council is discussing adding a poverty defense to the city code that municipal court judges must consider when a case comes before them. The council is expected to continue its deliberation on the proposal in January. In the version currently introduced and advanced by the city council member Lisa Herbold, a suspect facing charges on up to 100 different misdemeanor offenses, could use a poverty defense in court. Supporters of the plan say the goal is to find a different outcome than jail for a person because they are impoverished and had to resort to stealing or pinching a tent on private property to obtain adequate shelter, which could lead to trespassing charges. Quote, it's one of those well-intended concepts we want to take care of people and that can't take care of themselves, Humphrey said. But what they're really doing is hurting other people. Critics say the proposal would open the door to nonstop shoplifting, even though supporters say it's about having compassion for people who don't have anything. This is like, like, I probably, like, would have struggled with moving to Seattle anyways, even though I'd love to be on the West Coast, closer to my family in Oregon. Seattle was always kind of on the list of possibilities. Mm. It's fucking not anymore if they yeah. do this bullshit. I will never fucking oh, oh, live here's, in Seattle. Here's, this is, <laughs> this is the one that's so, gonna, I mean, that's this gonna, is literally on. a, this is. I got, let me get this one paragraph in, and then you can explode, because it's going to cause you to explode. We don't need two Andrew rants. Quote. <laughs> We know that this is simply fear-mongering, said Tiffany McCoy, a lead organizer for Real Change, uh, told the council, the city council's public safety committee Tuesday, quote, the early attacks against this are rooted in the anti-poverty bias. No, they're fucking not. No. They're rooted this in is, a don't touch my fucking stuff that I worked for and I need bias. This is the exact Andrew, same justification. Andrew is twitching. Hang on, Andrew hang on. Is twitching. I'm going to let... Andrew can get, give you a thought here. But I we know once he gets it. started, it's hard to get him stopped. So Christopher, right, and that's why I want to get my point. words in it. Yeah. Andrew, shut up. Andrew, shut up. Andrew, Hold shut on. up. Hold on. Hold on. Wait okay. your turn. This is the exact same shit that everybody was saying that justified the burning of the cities and everything like that with the private property burning during the George Floyd riots, Breonna Taylor riots, all of that. Oh, insurance will pay for it so they can afford to lose it. Motherfucker, now my insurance premiums are going to go up, you worthless pile of garbage. Okay. Wait, wait. Okay, one more, one more paragraph. One more paragraph. Thieves stealing goods, uh, stolen goods to earn money to pay basic needs is just one element of the proposal that is currently under consideration. Another element is known as the, quote, no legal alternative option. For example, if someone steals food from a grocery store but claims they did not know there was a food bank right around the corner, they could be protected under the poverty defense. So if I Andrew's vibrating so hard because there is no like legal option left for me to defend my property. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, Andrew, Andrew, go. Yeah. Commies. Okay. I had to get it out. Anyway. <laughs> Andrew's what a kind different... of commie bullshit is this? <laughs> Andrew's a different shade of red right now. He yeah. was only oh oh Nancy's his beard. <laughs> are you fucking kidding I have been homeless twice actually three times technically three times in three different states I've been homeless and I never had to resort to stealing from people who had legally owned things in order to mm -hmm. survive this is nothing but a justification for the forcible redistribution of wealth by yep. different means than centralized authority. That's all this is, is just yep. going, well, we they're going to rebel if we say, well, government gets to take from you and redistribute. So we're just going to go ahead and say, well, sorry, they were just too poor to have a choice. It's your fault is essentially what they're saying. It is yeah. your fault that you had more than other people. Therefore, you yeah. have to give them what they feel they need 
I mean, are you fucking... And how far does this go? How far is... Oh, uh, they took a 65-inch TV out of some <laughs> store. Well, they were just too poor to be able to properly watch CNN. So and what, it, what's a basic need? Is sex yeah. considered a basic what, need? Because you what, can justify yeah. rape under this if sex yeah. is a basic need. Yeah. What and who determines need? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, That's are you completely kidding me? Or basic. Even, yep. And if you don't know... I'm sorry, but if you don't know that a food bank exists... If you don't know that there are programs that exist for you to get food, if you don't know that you can go to a church and go, hey, I'm starving and I'm homeless, please, please help me. If you don't know that that will work and get you food, that isn't anybody's responsibility but yours for not bothering to seek out alternatives that didn't hurt other people. And the bottom line is you're hurting other people when you steal from them. This is an actual real crime with real victims. And you actually yep. have the fucking option to walk up to the business owner and say, I'm homeless and I'm starving. Would you help me? Would you buy me a meal? And to be perfectly you know, honest, if, if I'm if this barber shop that they broke into, if I'm this barber shop owner and I'm in there, say, sweeping up at the end of the day and a homeless guy comes up, knocks on my window and says, dude, I am starving. I have been out on the streets for months. Mm-hmm. I need something to eat. I'm going to walk his ass down to McDonald's down the street. I'm going to buy him a fucking sandwich and I'm going to send him on his way and say, Mm -hmm. you know, here's your meal. Take care of yourself and, you know, get some help. And I might, if I have the money to do so, I might even, you know, hey, come by the shop tomorrow. Rent a motel room for a night or two. Or uh, just say, hey, come by the shop uh, um, at six o'clock every night. You can sweep the floors and I'll pay you a little bit. Yeah, Yeah. we have a, a, a liquor store on the corner down here. It's about, I don't know five or six hundred yards away and and the the old owners not the new owners because they had to sell the business because of covid but the old owners they had a they had like a system we have a lot of homeless in the area and homeless would come up and 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 like wave through the window and he'd wave back and the homeless would go around and pick up cigarette butts in the parking lot you bring a handful of cigarette butts to the window throw them in the trash he'll give you a sandwich and sandwich and a bag of chips Nice. Like that was that was the thing. Yeah. The the little Caesars across the street is privately owned, um, and they do the yeah. same thing. They do the Seattle same. Seattle would be better served if they offered mm-hmm. businesses tax breaks for doing things like that. Oh, it can't do a tax break. Yeah. That yeah. that would that would ruin the economy. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's stealing from government. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. Is like <laughs> you. There's so government. many. There's so many free market <laughs> alternatives that exist to this, where mm-hmm. people could just. Where you would be able to, you know, if people could afford it, and that's the biggest thing, is that already these businesses can't afford, and and private individuals really can't afford so often to give to even charities that they believe in and and help people, even that they want to help, because the government steals so much from you, right? You really don't have the ability to do anything yourself, right? And if government wasn't stealing, if they weren't already so pushing the fucking communist objectives of turning everybody into state worker bees and the state yep. would distribute onto its own ideas of who deserves things. Not only stealing, but all the market controls that make everything more fucking expensive. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. If I could, like having regulations regarding the number of cherries in a frozen cherry pie. Yeah. Are you kidding me? It's If you had no barriers to entry into the business world, right? None. There were no, there was no regulations. Not you had no barrier to entry. A homeless person could go. You know what? I I can at least like put screws into boards. I can I can drill holes. I can you know I do can some very light hammer. Framing. Yeah, I can do some. They would be a carpentry. worthy investment if there weren't mm-hmm. any barriers to entry because they right. would be so much more loyal to somebody who helped them out when they were at rock bottom mm-hmm. and, and gave the point, them something yeah. that they could do with dignity. To take care of themselves. And that's a big part of it is that dignity aspect of it. People yeah. don't, they don't want to, even with it, when they are homeless, they don't want to go around and beg and plead and ask for help from all these other places yep. because they don't feel like it gives them any dignity to stand on their own. And Whereas this kind of thing is only going to make them, it worse because this is right. going to destroy what little self-image they fucking have left. Because there's going to be yep. guilt attached to this, no matter what. Well, I mean, and and, even yeah, I mean, even going for me, like even going to uh, going to a food bank, even doing those things, like when I had to, 
destroyed so much of my pride mm-hmm. and my self worth, yep. and that I had to break down and go do that just so that I wasn't starving, just so that I wasn't in this position where I I was about to die because I couldn't eat. So, like to to then sit there and really, what you're doing is you're degrading these people even further because what you're saying yes. is you're so oh sorry you're so you're just so poor that it's yeah. okay, honey. You we know what? understand. It's, these people, it's undermining these... their humanity. It's animalizing it fucking people. Yep. Yeah. These people. These people need to ask themselves: WWDD, what would Dale do? Yes. Yeah. What would Dale do? <laughs> not a, not a single one of the people supporting this proposal would travel four and a half hours on a jet ski to see a girl. I they've can mis- guarantee they've known for you. Months. Yeah. Dude, I can guarantee you that not a single one of these people who support this proposal have ever donated so much as a dollar to a panhandler. Yeah. They've never even well, given that money to somebody on the side of the road with a cardboard anti, sign. They probably supported anti-panhandling legislation. Yeah, yeah I'm sure. Panhandling legislation, they probably because supported anti very small business. They're probably the kind of people who would call the cops on a children's lemonade stand. Yeah. That's, there are, that's there are these people, people looking through the windows and checking the number of people you had at Thanksgiving dinner. Yep. They're yeah. the people that They're drive past the Home people. Depot parking lot and call ICE. Yep. Yeah. Oh. And that's and that's the thing is it's like, you know, I mean, I've I've literally hired people that I happen to know were illegal immigrants and given them cash mm-hmm. for work for me because they needed it and they can't earn it any other way. And dude. I'm not here to judge you for wanting a better life and wanting a better so, life for your family. That's not so my. That's not what they've, they've worked harder yeah. than yeah. legal they workers in a lot of places, and well, giving people a non-violent and... option that yeah. lets yeah. them fucking preserve their dignity makes the world a better place. Right. For but the reality is the reality is is that despite what so many people who are so super politically motivated want to believe, the political left does not want better economic opportunities for the poor. The political right does not want better economic opportunities for entrepreneurs. This doesn't act. This isn't actually a thing. They both want control in the name of preserving what they want and keeping the people in power and in riches that they want. And that's Uh it. That's what they're about. And in the case of the left, this, this whole kind of thing, which is a very leftist thing to try and push forward is just that they don't think that the people who actually showed initiative put hundreds of hours a week worth of work into this business. You know, they they miss out on birthday parties. They miss out on Christmas and New Year's and all these other, you know, they, they don't get to go to Easter, all this stuff. They don't care that they put that much time in. They don't care that they put that much effort in because they just want the people that they like and they support to have the money and the power and the riches, and they don't think that anybody who doesn't support them deserves it. And that's all this is about. Yeah. This well, is and very few, plain and very few of these mm-hmm. politicians, and even less leftists in general, have done that, have, have gone through that, that entrepreneurship, like the, the fucking hard work that people put mm-hmm. into building businesses. All they've ever done is leach off of producers. So they don't understand Bernie's, being Bernie's a Sanders. producer. Yeah. They yeah. don't understand what goes into being a producer. So. All right. We're running out of time. Yep. So. Yep. Ask yourself, what would Dale what, do? What would Dale do? <laughs> God, that was Somehow such a great I don't story. think the jet ski is going to save this issue or, you know, fix this issue in Seattle. Oh, yeah. have, have you ever messed around on jet ski? I mean, that's, that's just, that sort of fun is going to save a lot of issues. I mean, the Puget, <laughs> Sound, the Puget Sound is no Irish Sea, and I still wouldn't fuck around in there on a jet ski. Yeah. Well, Darwin, you know, you drop a, kill a whales. Ski. Yeah, drop a jet ski from a high enough height, and it can probably solve some problems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The scene of Mad stuff. Max where they strap them to the horse backwards. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, just say options <laughs> exist. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Throw some plugs out there. Buy my book. Buy Derek's book. Listed, yeah. listed, linked in the description. Yep. Yes. And if you would like a full and luxurious and soft and shiny and fabulous beard like I have, 
Make sure that you get products from the same place I do, which produces some of the greatest and is super pro Viking, which is awesome. Thebeardstruggle.com. And make sure if you do buy things from thebeardstruggle.com, and I highly recommend their, at the very least, uh, shampoo and conditioner set gold edition. I use uh, Odin's uh, personally, but uh, make sure that you um, do that and use the code Inked Anarchist 15, all run together, Inked Anarchist 15 at checkout so that you get 15% off of your sweet, sweet beard stuff. Yes. Uh, the Beard Struggles IG account is is lit. It's it's on fire. They post good stuff after good stuff after good stuff after good stuff. And their videos are fucking hilarious. Oh, yeah. They actually, you know, for those videos, they actually solicited those of us who are the brand Vikings, who are their... Mm-hmm their promo reps for our ideas and scripts mm-hmm. specifically to produce those. So those of us who are brand Vikings, uh, all those, all those commercials you see that they do, we came up with them. Yeah. You gotta show the hat. Thanks. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's the hat. That's the hat uh, with their logo. Uh, again, it's beard, the beard struggle.com. Check them out. The, there are tons of brand Vikings on Instagram as well. Most of us have liked each other on Instagram. Uh, yeah. So you can follow the whole ring of all of us if yep. you get to so, go down that road. Right. And check out the homies at Poppins Patches. They're boogaloos and they're having a sale right now. So poppinspatches.com. Go check them out. And Road to Autonomy Magazine. Ooh. Dharma is putting in work on that one. And uh, the I dropped episode. the ball on that because I kind of like, I've been oddly disassociated for like the last couple of months and i just can't fucking yeah. i can't pull anything off right now i'm just i don't know broken don't know. broken ovens equal broken derica <laughs> it's not just the ovens there's so much broken shit but yeah it's but yeah you know. i don't know i've just been feeling oh. for the last couple of months like something is like pressing down on me it's it's a post-election um like post it's it's election stress that that's I think that's what it is. We go through this every but four years. But I didn't years. pay attention to any of it. You were it's still just... part of it. Yeah, and Kevin never we, shuts up about it. Kevin never shuts up about it. We talked about it. Everyone yeah. on social media was about it. Yeah, it's a stress, and it's gonna it's gonna continue through like Marchish, and then yeah. it'll disappear for like two and a half years. Yeah. So on that I feel note, bad about it. But and just, actually, Jason will probably only disappear for about six to eight months because you'll have the midterm. Then we get the midterm. We start talking about how they're going to spend seven billion dollars on the midterm, and yeah. So yeah, you're right. So on that note, I don't know. This has been a fun episode. We're back on our bullshit, yeah. <laughs> and we'll uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Yep. Peace. Peace.